postpartum hemorrhage, a silent killer lurking after childbirth. It's a serious complication that can occur after giving birth, and it's crucial for healthcare providers to be prepared. The PPH Bundle is a set of evidence-based strategies designed to prevent and manage postpartum hemorrhage. In this video, we'll explore the critical steps of PPH emergency response within the PPH Bundle. Postpartum hemorrhage, or PPH, is defined as the loss of more than 500 milliliters of blood after vaginal birth, or more than 1,000 milliliters after cesarean section. Several factors can increase the risk of PPH. These include prolonged labor, previous history of PPH, multiple births, multiparity, and certain medical conditions like coagulation disorders. PPH can range from mild to severe. Prompt recognition and intervention are essential to prevent severe complications. The PPH bundle is a cornerstone of PPH prevention and management. It encompasses a series of evidence-based interventions, including active management of the third stage of labor, uterotonics, and fundal massage. By diligently implementing the PPH bundle, healthcare providers can significantly reduce the incidence and severity of postpartum hemorrhage. Remember, prevention is key. Now let's discuss PPH emergency response, a step-by-step -step guide. The first step is early recognition. Recognizing the signs and symptoms of PPH is crucial. These may include heavy bleeding, passing large clots, dizziness, and a rapid weak pulse. The second step is immediate actions. If you suspect PPH, immediately call for help and notify the healthcare team. Assess the patient's vital signs and promptly apply fundal massage. The third step is teamwork and communication. Effective communication and teamwork are vital during a PPH emergency. Clearly communicate the patient's status and the plan of action among the healthcare team. The fourth step is key interventions. Uterotonics, such as oxytocin and misoprostol, are administered to help the uterus contract and control bleeding. In severe cases, blood transfusions may be necessary. If initial measures fail to control bleeding, the patient may need refractory PPH intervention, which include application of anti-shock garments and compression of aorta. Further may require advanced interventions includes uterine balloon tamponade to mechanically compress bleeding sites within the uterus, uterine artery embolization, a minimally invasive procedure to block blood flow to the uterus, surgical interventions, such as B. Lynch suture application, suture ligation of uterine or internal iliac vessels, or in severe cases, hysterectomy to save the life of mother. If facilities not available timely, refer the patient to the tertiary care center. The fifth step is continuous monitoring and re-evaluation. Continuously monitor the patient's vital signs and bleeding status. Re-evaluate and adjust interventions as needed based on the patient's response. Accurate and complete documentation of all interventions, patient responses, and outcomes is essential for quality improvement and learning. In summary, recognizing the signs and symptoms of PPH, implementing the PPH bundle, and responding promptly to emergencies are crucial for improving maternal outcomes. Let's work together to improve maternal health by raising awareness about PPH and ensuring access to quality health care for all women. Continuous learning and quality improvement initiatives are crucial to optimize PPH management and improve patient outcomes. Let's drive progress towards a future where no woman dies while giving birth. Thank you for watching.